Their work has gained growing recognition within African faith communities. We work in partnership to carry out HIV testing in faith centers, which was not something done before. The enlightenment that day actually opened my eyes, which has helped me even more in ministry. They are seen as pioneers in the HIV and AIDS advocacy system. I think they do really cutting edge work. And to have people who are working amongst this particular community, it's really important work. They have been showered with awards. The Action Plus Foundation is a UK-based NGO. Their HIV and AIDS outreach work within African faith communities is helping to lower infection rates and making a difference in the lives of those living with the infection. It was founded in 1997. They may not be as well-funded as other charities, but they walk with a big stick and they are taking their fight to the enemy. With branches in the UK and in Ghana, they operate at the heart of target communities, reaching out into churches educational institutions and vehicle stations. In fact, wherever the enemy may be lurking among the people. A large part of their work is organising HIV testing in churches, as featured in this BBC News report. Rates of HIV are 25 times higher among black Africans than the rest of the UK population. It's believed one reason is because the stigma of having the infection means many are too afraid to get tested. To try to tackle the issue, clinics are opening in some of London's churches to encourage the most vulnerable to get checked. But it's about time now that we begin to let education and create awareness about HIV that is not a taboo as the church sees it to be. It's not a case. It's just a condition. Their work with churches is predicated on the fact that many in African communities engage in religious fellowship and rely on their pastors for support. Here is Jane Anderson who is a specialist in the care of people living with HIV and AIDS. To have people who are working amongst this particular community, it's really important work. Uh, and in particular, working amongst faith communities, because we know that many people from African backgrounds rely very heavily on their church and on their pastors as places for information and places for support. And so to make sure that they're also getting good health messages in those environments and that they're getting lots of good factual information at the same time is really uh, useful. Fred Osei Anin is the founder and chief executive of Action Plus. An ordained minister, Reverend Anin, or Pastor Fred as many call him, is passionate about his work. Um, Action Plus Foundation is a, is a Christian non-governmental organisation, a charity which has been registered here in UK and in Ghana. Um, basically, the reason why I decided to um, set up this foundation is to address the issue of stigma and discrimination which during that time and even now was prevalent in the church and looking at the prevalence of HIV in the African community we are looking at a very vulnerable community that has the highest of all the uh, uh, HIV prevalence and at the end of the day the churches that they go to are ignorant about HIV and for that reason it has made HIV to have more influence on the African community because there is no awareness and people are not even uh, going to do their, their, their tests to, to, to know their status. Action Plus is the organisation that pioneered HIV testing in churches. Pastor Fred explains the rationale behind this strategy. And like most brilliant ideas, it is a simple one, very commonsensical. People travel from Africa to UK just to work. So to them, all that they know is that they have to work. So they wake up in the morning, they go to work, come back late, have something to eat, go to bed, wake up again, 
and go back to work because they want to make money quickly and go. You know, so they don't have time even to read books or listen to the news. You know, all that they know is that they have to make money. So, so, so when we have, you know, been able to set up these testing centers, now we will get them to do the tests. Because they wouldn't have to, you know, even say, where are we going to find it? Because they don't even have the time to find it. But on Sundays, they all congregate. They all get together. So that is the cutting edge. The higher incidence of HIV in some black communities has been attributed to migration from countries of relatively high prevalence, where people are ignorant of the disease and the stigma attached to it prevents better understanding of its modes of transmission and prevention. Evelyn Tawia is a medical doctor based in North London. She is also the medical director of Action Plus. I think that um, for, 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 for the region south of the Sahara, um, the message is still quite a taboo. There's a lot of work happening there, but people have not embraced the message as they ought to. And therefore, transmission, you know, infection continues to, to, to uh, go on. Um, lots of people have not been tested, or people refuse to get tested. And, and because of the stigma that's attached, people have not been tested, and therefore continue to then transmit the, the infections on, onto others without knowing. Um, and I think well, that's one of the main reasons why it's prevalent in sub-Saharan Africa, and, and consequently the, the group that is represented here in the UK. Ross White is the executive director of Mild May Mission Hospital, a facility in London which treats HIV patients. Dr. White, why do you think there's a higher prevalence of HIV and AIDS in black African or Caribbean communities? Oh, partly it's because uh, of migration, so it, it's people being born into um, countries and communities where there, there has been a higher uh, level. Of, of HIV and, and, and then at some stage uh, coming into the country. Um, but also, that's only part of the story. The, the most important part, I think, is, is this whole thing to do with stigma. Um, and this is the area that we really have to battle. Uh, we can treat HIV, but we need to battle stigma. And I think stigma is the thing that prevents people from getting tested. Get tested, know your status, it's just a virus at the end of the day. And uh, if you have that virus, uh, people can treat it. The battle against stigma is compounded by prejudice and irresponsible reporting in some sections of the mass media. And the fact that the church, Action Plus's primary arena of operation, can be a moralising and judgmental place. Mark Santos is the executive director of Positive East, the largest HIV charity in London. Many, many of our, our, of our clients and many of our African clients are people of faith. And faith plays both positive and sometimes sadly a negative role in people's lives for the reasons that you have, uh, have outlined. Sometimes um, faith leaders can play a negative role in promoting and, um, stigma and, uh, 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 and, and actually making people feel even more marginalised, people not wanting to talk about um, HIV and people can sometimes feel even more isolated and I've talked to people myself about the, those experiences. Organisations like Action Plus who already have the relationships with those faith communities, have a real understanding of the position of those faith communities, can talk to people in, in, the, in the way that they're going to listen, the way that they're going to understand. So is Action Plus helping to fight this stigma? Yes. I think they do really cutting edge work, in fact. Let me give you an example of what stigma looks like. Let's say that I've been to the doctors and they diagnose me with type 2 diabetes. And I go to the pub, pub that night and I say to my friends, um, I've been to the doctors this afternoon, they've told me that I got diabetes. Well, there'll be people there that will engage with you and they'll say, well, my friend's got diabetes or I've got diabetes. 
and you have a, a dialogue about it. Let's run the same scenario again, but you've been to the doctors and they've told you that you're HIV positive and you go out with your friends that night. Who are you going to tell? Now the big difference is this. Diabetes is a really difficult um, problem to deal with. Very, very complex. And there are people, of course, who die uh, of diabetes. It's not a very nice illness to have. Um, HIV untreated is also not a very nice illness to have, but it is treatable if you get tested early and get onto treatment. And so one is quite a treatable illness, but nobody wants to talk about it. The other one is a very complex one and everybody's cool about it. And that really is an example of how stigma still is uncomfortable for people living with HIV. The user-friendly approach of Action Plus is brilliantly illustrated in their work in Ghana, where one of the charity's trailblazers is John Azuma, a pastor who is HIV positive. This is Reverend Azuma, and I am HIV positive. Meeting Pastor Frey has played a very big role for my coming out, because he told me, you are not the only person living with HIV. There are thousands of people living with the virus, and and they are living their normal life. So why can't you do something to help your society? People are dying, people cannot come up, therefore people are dying slowly. And if you are living with it, your coming out can touch a life. Your coming out can save a life. While researching this film around London and Luton, we met a man who happens to be HIV positive. Let's call him Christopher. Some of these gentlemen that they don't even want to see beside him. When you go to church, you don't come here. Meanwhile, when they didn't know about your status, everybody will link you up, they link you with you. How is Action Plus different? Uh, for Action Plus, one thing I've noticed is, you know, they don't discriminate. And uh, they don't tell you that, you know, nature of your age is a punishment from God. It is this stigma attached to the illness which impelled an end to set up Action Plus. In fact, says Pastor Fred, it was divine intervention. If we are, you know, a Christian community that believe in love, and looking at, we looking at people with HIV as, you know, being immoral or being cursed, it's, it's, it's a situation that needs to be addressed, number one. So, I personally was called it wasn't like I looked at things and I wanted to do it. God specifically called me and said, Fred, I'm going to call you to intervene in this situation. So I opened up for God. And that's when I began to realize that this situation is really something that God wants to prove that he's not the one who has put a case on the people. It was revealed to him that challenging stigma meant that Action Plus had to engage with pastors and other leaders in African faith communities. Only by engaging faith leaders would the organisation gain entry and spread the message about HIV transmission and prevention amongst their congregations. So, number one, we had to set up this organisation to champion, you know, the, the campaign of HIV in the churches so that pastors will be trained and educated for them to get the knowledge about HIV and to understand that HIV is just a condition, a health condition that can be managed and has nothing to do with cares. Agnes Bazui is the executive director of the London-based Africa Advocacy Foundation. It's AIDS punishment from God? Uh, well, um, in terms of knowledge, I think Action Plus has been very good in terms of reaching down to the hearts of other faith leaders, in terms of understanding what HIV is, and also to support people who are living with or affected by HIV. Uh, in the past, we could not blame pastors for not knowing what HIV is because they were not trained and there was not enough information to inform them about the, the virus itself. 
Daniel Adewali King is one of the preachers that have benefited from the foundation's series of seminars and conferences targeting faith leaders. Uh, some few years back, let me say maybe about four or five years ago, I came in contact with this man via a letter of invitation that was sent to me. So I attended, it was somewhere in the city of London. I attended, the program was there, our speakers came, doctors, knowledgeable people about the issue of HIV. They came to speak to enlighten the African community regarding the stigma around HIV AIDS. And uh, I was well fed that day. My eyes was opened and uh, I was enlightened that through the your coming in contact with people like that, talking to them, you don't actually get to have the, uh, the virus. Uh, contrary to the belief of the African society that HIV AIDS is a cause from God, but the enlightenment that they actually opened my eyes, which has helped me even more in ministry. So from then, I've been in contact with Reverend Aiden, and we have been working together with Action Plus. Dr. Daniel King was one of those that um, we, we, we gave the opportunity for them to come forward to be trained. Um, when he came, he didn't have anything to do with HIV at all. Because um, according to him, uh, when he sees that somebody with, is with HIV, I mean, he doesn't even want to come close to him at all. Because when he comes close to you, you know the infection thing, you know. So he was that person who doesn't tolerate people with HIV. You can't even come to the location. But after the training, then he realized that, after all, I'm a pastor. And I need to have love my congregation members and so then he, he changed his behavior towards people with HIV changed and as I talk to you now he's one of the main people who are supporting our work bringing in more pastors and then also one way or the other in anywhere that we are going is part of Action Plus so he is like many of those uh, pastors hundreds of them that have benefited from Action Plus's education. We asked Agnes Bizui if Action Plus have been able to reduce stigma within the church. Yes, they have, um, because we work in partnership to carry out HIV testing in faith centers, which was not something done before. So if a, a faith leader can accept us to take HIV tests, rapid HIV testing within their churches, that means they have actually reduced the stigma of thinking that HIV is a death penalty. So, and again, we are gaining ground in partnership with the Action Plus, moving on to other new churches. Uh, it, it's about knowledge and also it's about belief. But in most cases, it's about providing resources for training people. Action Plus is actively working towards the day when HIV, which can lead to AIDS, is seen as just another illness, like diabetes, cancer, or even our good friend, the common cold. Yeah, I mean, I think in listening to Fred speak, um, I, I last heard him just a couple of days ago, his message was, it's just a virus. Um, and I think him in particular, having uh, being a pastor himself, um, and uh, on his team having other pastors, they're able to sort of separate out uh, this problem of moralisation uh, around the illness. The work the Foundation does in Ghana is an integral part of its operations. That is why we, from Action Plus Foundation, are a member of the 
still on World AIDS Day as Ghana joined the rest of the world to mark the 20th anniversary of World AIDS Day. Action Plus Foundation says it is committed to keeping the rate of HIV AIDS even lower in the country. Here is Reverend Anin at the Ghana High Commission in London, where Action Plus launched a project to build an HIV empowerment centre in Ghana. The land for the project was donated by a local chief, or Nene. This is the Nene with two members of his council of elders. Action Plus is now seeking funding in order for construction to commence. Of late, there is not much said about HIV because good treatment is keeping HIV in control. This is the new danger which HIV poses as a threat to us all humans. Because HIV is a human issue which has not yet gotten any medical cure to it. It is therefore very important that HIV awareness and activities which promote early testing should be re-intensified in our various communities to avoid the spread of the infection. Here is Dr. White on the work the charity does with churches in Ghana. They provide education, first of all, to the leadership team about what HIV is. Um, and, and then they ask to go and talk to the congregation, but then get the pastors to endorse what they say. Uh, they gave me a brilliant example of something that happened, actually not in this country, but in, in Ghana, where this model happened. And then when it came to testing, the queue went out the door and round the block uh, of the people from the congregation that decided that they were going to get tested. Yes, it is necessary for, for, for the work in Ghana to continue because, yes, HIV and AIDS, it's, it's, uh, it's an issue in, in Ghana. Um, the churches are still quite unwilling to accept the message. We'll need somebody... And you know, with a vision and a passion like we've got for the for, for with um, Action Plus to be able to get into these areas where the uh, the uh, the health service cannot get to because of the, of the of the blockade of the message for somebody from the inside to be actually be telling the people in the inside that yes, you can test for HIV and AIDS in the church. Yes, there's there's treatment and that the taboo is is no it's no longer um, necessary. Because HIV is not it's not going to kill you anymore if you if you come out early if it's been if it's, if it gets identified quite early. For National HIV Testing Week this past November, we travelled to Luton, just outside of London, one of the places where the foundation engages with African churches. They had set up a HIV testing clinic at the inspirational Charismatic Church in partnership with the Terence Higgins Trust and Embrace Life. Many congregation members flocked to the testing clinic. We also capitalised on the opportunity to take the test. Later, some of the congregation spoke to us. The last one I had was two years ago. And I mean, we never know what we contracted. You know, I'm a, I'm a married woman, which I don't know what's happening out there. So if it's here with me... It's in my church. I just took the opportunity to do it. Yes, I took the test today because Action Plus was in church presenting their, their weekly awareness. Yeah. So I took the time to take the test. Why do you think it's necessary for people to take the HIV test? So you know. When I first heard it, I said, oh, I don't have it. But it's good to always test and also be aware and then take whatever support available in case you have it. We are very happy it won successfully. Yes. We also spoke with Action Plus Luton and their partners. We've done a lot of programs like this just to create awareness and also encourage people to do or do a test. What we have done today, in fact I'm really happy because we got a lot of people get their test done. And I could say that I thank Almighty God for such a successful uh, event uh, today. 
we're here at a local Africa church to promote people to get tested in HIV testing week. It's always better to know whether you have HIV or not. If you're negative, you're free and clear. If you're positive, you want to find out whether you need medication, yes or not. The good news is that medication today is very easy. Not many tablets, easy to take, fewer side effects. In which case you are protecting your health. And also, if you have any sense of responsibility, you are going to be protecting the people you sleep with in future. Today, we, um, we, were, we were kindly invited to come along and uh, work with Action Plus to offer free, rapid, confidential uh, HIV testing. I've got to say, we work with a lot of churches, and for me personally, from the work I do, this was one of the biggest successes we've had. Uh, we tested a lot of people who have walked out with a big smile on their face. Here is Reverend Yao Bumfo of the Living Springs International Church, introducing Pastor Fred at a HIV awareness and testing event. Somebody said the other day that we are free to make our choices in life, but we are not free from the consequences of the choices that we make. And my prayer and my hope is that as we receive information, as we receive education and are empowered, we can make better choices in our lives. And so with a standing ovation, let's welcome to the pulpit God's servant, Reverend Fred Enning, to introduce the team that he came along with. Put your hands together for him. God bless you. Thank you very much. You may be seated. Today is a very great day, and we are privileged to have this opportunity to put this program together. It is the first of the conference, as Pastor said, that we are coming up with. The unique selling point of Action Plus is that they are a bridgehead in the fight against HIV and AIDS. Here is Mark Santos. Um, I'm absolutely delighted to have the opportunity to work with Action Plus and Fresenine and his team because it enables um, organisations such as Positive East to engage better with um, one of the communities that we're trying to reach, people from the variety of different African communities. And Action Plus, because of their relationship in terms of faith, in terms of um, com um, the community and cultural understanding, are really well placed to make that connection and help organisations such as Positive East to reach, better reach, better connect and better support those communities in relation to addressing their needs around HIV. Right. So, um, can one say then that Action Plus gives you access to one of your target demographics? Yes, I mean, uh, some great examples about it is that um, I think it's about two years ago now that we worked with Action Plus to do an event in Waltham Forest and Action Plus made the connections and contacts for us with the, um, the, 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 the local bishop, um, with the pastor, so that we could go in and our staff could give testimony about living well with HIV, about the value of um, testing and we tested over a third of the of the people present in the church that day and we wouldn't have been able to do that without the connection, without the relationships that Fred and Ian and Action Plus has. Early medical intervention has been proven to confer life expectancies on positive people comparable to those who are negative. Here is Christopher. Of course if you know that this is what you are going through, you know, you take your as long as you are taking your treatment every day, daily. And it's like, you can live longer, just like somebody who, who has no one injury at all. So how long have you known your status now? 25 years. So if, if you hadn't known, do you think you'd still be alive? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think I might be dead. The incredible thing about HIV is that for those people who are come forward for testing, for those people that are found to be positive, the vast, vast majority, uh, they can take one or two tablets a day for the rest of their lives. They, they will live a normal length of life. I've worked in this field for many, many years. And when I started as a doctor working in this field, most people died. And now most people live. And the difference is extraordinary. And that has happened during the course of my working life. 
Action Plus embraces the use of condoms and other protection against HIV infection. This is contrary to the teaching of many church leaders who say condoms promote pre- and extramarital sex. Abstinence is their gospel. Most people in their lives will be sexually active at some point. Uh, and I think we have to accept that fact. And to make sure that people have sex lives that are safe, uh, that are happy, and that they actually are able to access what they need to have a happy, healthy sex life. Uh, it's difficult if that is something that comes into conflict with religious belief. But at the moment, given the threats and uh, the infections that are around, I think it's really important that people are able to protect themselves, look after themselves, and have the support of their faith leaders to make sure they're maximising their health. Like stigma and anti-protection dogma, another damaging influence found in many black churches is pastors who say they can cure HIV and AIDS. That cancer is dead from the root. Tell them not to worry about anything, it's cost. Every yoke of witchcraft over your life, I destroy them now. I revoke and cancel that sickle cell and then you set free from the power of diabetes. I command every affliction in your body to leave your body now. Every sickness to leave your body now. Prayer is a key to every Christian, but prayer alone cannot bring our health back when we ignore medicine. Do you think it's dangerous if people are being told that? Yes. We need to teach our people the truth. Of all the challenges the charity faces, perhaps the most debilitating is the lack of resources to fund their work. Everybody's facing funding challenges. Uh, we're living in a very difficult time, uh, economically really, across the board. Uh, and so actually making sure that people do get a test is also really important because we know that it costs less if people are treated sooner. Uh, so it's actually a, a good life-saving and money-saving intervention. But of course, finding the budget in the first place uh, to fund testing and to fund outreach is challenging. Uh, we know that local government, which has the responsibility for uh, paying for HIV prevention in general, is having a really difficult time in terms of the current economic climate it's because we need to be able to show it works. So getting a good, robust evaluation of programmes to be able to say to funders, this is something that we know reaches the people who need testing and maybe wouldn't reach, be reached in another way. So, in effect, you're saying that um, testing mm -hmm. is a very cost-effective mm -hmm. and efficacious way to address the problem of HIV infection yes, and AIDS. Yes, it is. Testing is, is central, is really important both for people who are living with HIV to find out, and it's very important that they get access to the treatment and care they need for themselves so they stay well, and that in itself is cost effective. However, as well as that, people who are living with HIV and are on treatment are very much less likely to pass their infection on to other people. So it's a very, it's a win-win situation. We're always receiving limited resources, and yet there is a lot of work to be done. So in terms of trying within our limits, I think we're trying, we're working very well, but there is a lot more to be done in terms of how the services can be sustained. Pastor Fred is like a hound locked on a scent. He discovered that HIV intervention in the African community is very effective when it emanates from the church. Now, in a manner of speaking, he's following the scent. But the lack of funding is the major stumbling block. In a word, he is an inventor without the capital to mass produce his brainchild. The church in the African community is the heart for HIV intervention. And so as we have discovered this I mean, asset, we want to utilize it to the full. We want to not just do it in one church to church. We want to you know influence the whole Christian community, we want to influence the whole system. The impact of early testing is very, very, very paramount. So we are looking at, you know, uh, uh, moving 
into almost every every corner where the, there are churches and even going beyond London, Luton and other places. Can one call you the preacher of <laughs> HIV testing? <laughs> they have called me this. I mean, I've got a lot of names. I mean, trust me. I mean, I might have been stigmatized right from the beginning. I lost my church. My, my, my members didn't understand why our pastor should be doing HIV work. Some were even thinking, is he himself HIV positive? You know, so many things have happened. But thank God for the achievements. Now people have come to know that it was good. I took that bold step forward. So it's 18 years now. This is your 18th yes. anniversary. Yes, yes. So um, what has been the successes and failures and what do you see the futures? Um, it, it's not been easy, as you know already. We, we started as a small little organization and we had no one to even give us a seed offering to set up. So it has all been faith, 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 faith. We are not funded. In fact, since we started in the year 1997, we haven't had the opportunity of having one major funder to say we are going to support your work. It, it's been a very, very big challenge. As I talk to you now, you know, we want to move into, into higher levels but the funding is not there. But one thing we have, you know, achieved is that, I mean, we have been able to, you know, uh, 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 work very hard within these 18 years to, to, to influence the, the, the HIV uh, 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 advocacy system. We have been able to, you know, do something unusual, something that nobody has done before, you know, and it has, now spearheaded the HIV intervention and it's growing very, very fast because we are able to reach out to the people, those who need to have intervention in, in the HIV uh, 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 situation are, are being located everywhere and, and lives are changing. I just want our Reverend uh, Alfred Enin to be encouraged. Let him be encouraged. He's doing a tremendous work. I know from our talking, it has been a long battle for the past 18 years. And uh, a thing that he has been doing alone. But he's being recognized now, getting awards from local government, from uh, bodies, from other charity organizations. So he's being recognized for the tremendous work he's doing within the African community, one, and within the people of the United Kingdom. Indeed, Action Plus have been recognised for their pioneering work in HIV advocacy and intervention. They have won four awards just within the last 12 months. Here is Dr. White on the charity's plans to expand their activities. Wherever they can practically take their message, um, I think it's important. I think, they, as I mentioned earlier, they've had some great successes in Ghana. Uh, they're doing some good work um, in, in and around London. They've got a good project up in Luton. And I think wherever they can find an open door, um, it, into communities where actually there's a higher prevalence rate of HIV and um, we know in the black African and Caribbean communities in the UK there is a higher prevalence rate than there is in the Caucasian uh, communities. So if they can actually take that message to communities where there's a higher prevalence rate then that's, that's a good, good, good focus of resources. Is there anything else you want to add? I just want to wish Action Plus um, uh, all the success in their next 18 years. I would very much like to wish Fred and Ian and all in Action Plus a happy, a very happy 18th birthday. 
may have many more years of doing such great work um, going forward in the future and I look forward to the opportunity of working with you in the future too. Is there anything else you would want to add? Um, I think Action Plus uh, as an organisation, they have been very proactive in working in partnership but also in opening up areas where we had not reached before. So to that, I'm really grateful that I know Action Plus and I'm working with them closely. We have now come to the end of our journey. It has been a worthwhile learning experience and a humbling one. The good thing about having contributors such as we have had is that they leave you with little to say in your conclusion. However, we do have one thing to say or rather add to what our generous contributors have said already. And that is that this journey of discovery has taught us that the work of Action Plus is vital in our world and should be supported by all means. We will give the last word to Fred Osei Anin, a true visionary and crusader, the man who pioneered HIV testing in the church all those years ago. I've never been paid ever since we started 18 years. I've never had one week that a paycheck has been dropped into my pocket. But now people are asking me, how do you get funding? Who is funded here? So this shows that Jehovah God who called me really have proved that he hasn't put case on anybody. Because if a car without petrol can run with the speed that we are running, it might be God behind it. But well, wouldn't you like the government or somebody else to give you some petrol anyway? <laughs> yes, because we want to work. We really want to reach out to almost all the target areas. The reason why we need the support from the government is that HIV now is under control because we have a very good you know, uh, 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 treatment that is coming up that is really keeping people's lives prolonged now. And this is what is making HIV now to become an issue because nobody is talking about HIV anymore. But HIV is still there. It is still there. 